My name is Jeremy Lampy. I am the graduate assistant here at Center College. I found out about this position from my ceramics professors back at Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville, just outside of St. Louis. They gave me an application, actually a couple years in a row, to try to get me to come and apply for this job. And I was a full-time assistant blowing glass in St. Louis and finally decided it's time to move on and applied for this position and got it and moved out here in August. And I guess that leading up to that, I was a, originally a ceramics major and uh, was making functional pots and thought I was gonna be a potter for the rest of my life and showed up there and they had a glass studio and just, you know, I took glass and just fell in love with it and was hooked. And here I am, you know, blowing glass and still making pots. I was working construction, I was ready to become a carpenter for the rest of my life. And decided to take a ceramics class again just because I missed it and I didn't know why. And started taking it and was just opened up so many new doors that my teacher told me that I could do this for the rest of my life if I wanted to. And I just, that just blew me away. I didn't think that was even an option for somebody to make pots. And he, he said, if you're serious about this, you need to go over to Edwardsville because they have a really good ceramics program. And so that's what I did. You know, I moved to Edwardsville and not knowing anybody over there and just jumped into the ceramics program there. And my first semester, I signed up for glass blowing also and so from that that first day of school I was been taking ceramics and glass and the thing about glass that's so different from ceramics is the immediacy of the process where I can apply all the color I can make all the parts put it all together and take it out of the oven the next day and it's for the most part finished whereas ceramics it's have to make it and let it dry for a week and then fire it once and then glaze it and fire it again and so it's a couple week process just to get a finished product made and just being able to capture because clay is sort of like a fluid material but you aren't able to capture it the way you can glass like you can just freeze glass in, in time and just picture this material as a molten object and it just just sort of froze up and this is what was the, the result of that. Okay so for some of my last pieces they they reference industrial cast-offs as I like to call them. Pieces that of machinery or tools or metal that were once served a purpose and are no longer being used and they're just thrown away and just left for trash. And in that, you know, find little rubber caps like these or little metal clamps like these and some of these little parts are actually referenced off of these objects that I find and through the process they sort of lose the direct reference so they don't necessarily look like these rubber caps anymore but the color I use a lot of this metallic black sort of iridescent shiny metallic black that is sort of supposed to reference that machinery sort of metal look and then <laughs> most of my work involves using this metallic black color in contrast with a very bright color and in doing that, I'm trying to convey this idea that these were maybe parts off of a machine or parts that sort of served a purpose at one time. And then man has sort of taken them and just sort of used them, abused them, and just cast them off to the side doing like what we're good at, you know, just using stuff and wasting it and just forgetting about it. And so I guess sometimes these are, you know, maybe things that have been cast aside and we forget about them and they're starting to come back and be their own sort of objects and 
not necessarily use the same purpose that they serve when we made them and use them. And then I'll make ceramic parts and start combining glass and ceramic pieces together and just to play on this idea of what material it is, is it glass, is it clay, or is it metal, or is it rubber. And I'll even coat some of the pieces in rubber, in like a liquid rubber, and cover the surface. And so you really start to lose that, you know, that reference to what it was made out of. Okay, so originally before I ever started blowing glass, I was a potter. I worked full time at a production pottery making pots, you know, making 50, 60, 70 cups a day and spitting out the same thing over and over and over. And I came to a realization that it, that is not what I want to do in my life, is make the same piece over and over. So I sort of, I don't go out of my way to make each piece look different, but I definitely don't try to make them the same. Because I could be doing any anything else. It's, as soon as I start making the same thing in a material, it's just, you know, I might as well be in a production line somewhere. And that's just not what I want to do. I want each piece to be individual and each person who happens to come across one of my pieces to feel like they have a unique, one-of-a-kind piece. And so I still feel this need to make functional ceramics. And, you know, I still enjoy making pictures and I still use you know, try to make connections to my sculpture. Like I'll use the, this bronze glaze that is actually, it's got a lot of metal in it and it looks like it's bronze, but it's actually a glaze. So some of my pots leading up to, before I started venturing off into making sculpture, I started getting, making more sculptural looking pieces where this has, you know, a funky lid that comes out and it's got this, these little hidden things down there that are sort of little sculptural objects that are still on a you know on a, a lidded vessel and this was probably one of the last pieces before I started just you know I was like why does this have to be a vase and why does it have to be standing up and I started making things and laying them on their sides and you can in some of my pieces you can start to see some of the direct references between you know some of my ceramics work in my sculpture. Okay, so this newest direction I've been taking in this glass is making these bell jars and the, the this first this is the first bell jar I made and this came from a request from my girlfriend who was here and wanted me to make her a bell jar to make for one of her plants and so it, I made it and she had to leave before it was she could see it and so I put it in here and just had this little part sitting here and didn't have room so I just came in and you know, set it over there and was looking at it a few times and thought that would be pretty interesting as an actual piece and so I started combining these bell jars over these parts I'm making, trying to contain them and just sort of, you know, adding to what these little objects are if they're some kind of weird funky little creature that, you know, should be contained. Or, and it, but it, it's, not that it's supposed to be like that, it's just sort of supposed to raise, you know, different questions to people and because it only means that to me and I don't want to try what I think onto anybody else and it's open to interpretation 